Hey guys, Pablo with BND Veterans Point of View. So today we're going to be covering fake news. So what is actually fake news? I mean, a lot of governments, they have laws in place to stop news stations to actually lie on camera. So what do they do? They modify things, put things out of context. And I'll tell you this, while my time in the army, I actually saw a lot of fake news. Um, as an example, I remember watching in CNN and that was about 2009, and they're discussing the war in Iraq. Well, and that's fine. They're talking about combat. They're talking about all those things. But the video that was actually shown was from 2004 during the invasion. And one of the most interesting things is it's actually sad video from 2004, but it was so small in the corner of the screen that even if you had a 70-inch television, you probably would not be able to see. The only reason why I knew there was something wrong in this image was because, well, I was in Iraq. So I knew how things were going or not in there. So, all right, guys, I know it's going to be a little bit exaggerated, but um, I'm going to have my own fake news right now. So, roll credits. Good evening. This is BND Fake News at 10. And I'm your host, Pablo Fernandez. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have proof of real alien life. 23 hours ago, U.S. fighter jets have encountered real UFOs while flying over San Diego. Here's our footage. Dude, there's a fucking drone, bro. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. Oh my gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. The whole thing, dude. That's not our LNS though, is it? It's not. It is an LNS, dude. So, as you guys see, both those videos are actually real. The only thing I had to do was I mixed both videos, what made it seem like it was actually a believable situation. And that brings me to the point I was making before. It's editing. So, news stations like to do it a lot. They... They want to move public opinion to one side. So what they do, they add it in the way they want. And it's like they say, good news don't sell. So let's take a look, for example, and I'm just going to assume you all remember in 2016, the Milwaukee riots. Um, it had to do with the death of Sybil Smith that was... A young man, he was stopped on a traffic stop, and he pointed his gun at the cop, and he got killed. Now, one of the things that the news kind of forgot to mention was that the cop was actually a black cop. So, I'm going to show you guys what actually was reported by CNN, okay, trying to show that Sybil's sister... Uh, she was trying to call for peace on the streets and, you know, all those good things. So let's take a look at the footage. At least one person was shot and rushed to the hospital. A police officer also hospitalized after a rock smashed the windshield of a squad car. The weekend of violence began on Saturday with demonstrators torching several businesses, overturning cars and throwing rocks at police to protest the police shooting death of 23-year-old Silvell Smith. Smith was shot fleeing a traffic stop when police say he turned toward the officer with a gun in his hand. The officer's body camera capturing the deadly encounter. Milwaukee's mayor tried to address the festering anger about whether the shooting was justified. Without question, he had a gun in his hand. And I want our community to know that. Governor Scott Walker activating the National Guard to assist police and declaring a state of emergency. I said I was worried about whether or not things would escalate. Smith's family and friends holding a vigil marked by prayers. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. With his sister calling for peace. Don't bring the violence here and the ignorance here. Milwaukee police say they made multiple arrests overnight. We're and all right, guys, so, and, and that's one of the major problems. Because what they don't show is what actually was said on the contest, the whole thing. And that's what I want to show you guys right now. Kingdom come, thy will be done. 
with his sister saying the violence only hurts her community and to take it elsewhere. Burning down shit ain't gonna help nothing. Y'all burning down shit we need in our community. Take that shit to the suburbs. Burn that shit down. Take that shit to the suburbs. Burn that shit down. Take that shit to the suburbs. Burn that shit down. So as you guys can see, CNN just decided to omit some of the facts and put that person as a martyr. Um, a sister that lost his poor brother, innocent guy, that had a stolen gun in his possession, but she was still calling for peace. Well, no, no, she wasn't calling for peace. She actually didn't want a, her neighborhood destroyed, and she was more than happy to have the suburbs getting destroyed. But you see, CNN doesn't stop just there. Now, they even get to the point to stage news. I mean, I, I would really appreciate if at least they hired someone like James Gunn to do their news. At least it would be more believable. So what they did on the next video was uh, during the London attacks, they decided to show a Muslim demonstration against ISIS. And uh, don't take me wrong, I, you know, it's great. Um, they're actually trying to make good news, but the problem is it wasn't real. So just take a look on that. Uh, reporting. What I want to show you now, viewers, um, is a wonderful scene. Um, these are uh, Muslim mums. Um, there's a little fella here uh, who's bought a little sign. And this is in commemoration. You can see his little sign to the heroes of London. Uh, there are flowers on the street here. Um, ladies with hashtag turn to love. Hashtag ISIS equals enemies of Islam. Hashtag ISIS will lose. Hashtag turn to London. And I think uh, a poignant scene and a scene we should sit on just for you viewers uh, to understand exactly how people feel here on the streets of London, so close to what were such brutal attacks last night. And you see, guys, CNN back it again. And the worst thing is you had even guys sitting on director's chairs, pretty much moving people around to the best angle they were going to film. And I get it. The message was nice. You know, a lot of Muslims are against ISIS. I would say most of them. And people don't support terrorists. But the problem is this isn't real. I guarantee you, they could find people actually giving their honest opinion and letting people know what they really thought about the terror attacks. But no, they would rather stage a manifestation. You know, news stations are doing that every single day. And you know whose fault it is? It's our fault. We don't do our research. We just accept whatever they say is true. And we keep reposting that stuff in social media. That gives them power. We are giving power for those news stations to do what they do. I've seen way too many lies. We all have, but we keep accepting. I'll tell you what, nowadays, everybody has a cell phone. If anything happened in the world, you're going to see people filming it, posting online, posting on YouTube, Facebook, and everything. You know what we have to do? If you think there is even a 1% chance that it's not true what a news station is saying, do your research. Look it up. I guarantee you, someone posts the whole thing, but don't give power to them. You know what you have to do? Smash those people on social media. Don't let them get away with it. I'll be honest, nowadays, I barely watch the news. I usually find all my information online from unbiased people. And I'll be honest, I think we all should do the same. And well, guys, um, I guess that's all for today. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that subscribe button. Hit the notifications bell, give me a like, and leave a comment to what you guys wanted to see on next week's A Veteran Point of View. And just give you guys a heads up, I know today's Sunday, 
and this video is coming out two days late, but the main reason is we had some power outage because of an accident close to me. So, yeah, I'm late with the video, and I'll try to make sure it doesn't happen again. Thank you very much, and I hope you guys have an amazing week. Goodbye.